Hi, uh, my name's Jacob. I'm an artist and student currently studying uh, my second year at Salford University doing fine art. Uh, I'm just here today to talk a little bit about uh, the work I do and some of sort of how I got into art, and, um, and then I'm going to share uh, just a little activity that I, th I think might be quite useful in terms of. Uh, a good jumping off point for coming up with some of your own ideas. When I was younger, I never really thought of like art as a career. I never really sort of, uh, it was something I just enjoyed doing as a hobby. I really, really enjoyed like drawing. Um, and yeah, that kind of, uh, I had a big interest in like comic books and stuff. So I think that really like inspired um, the style of work that I was uh, interested in at the time. So I ended up uh, doing, at, uh, art and Sign, uh, a diploma, and uh, that was, I think, uh, that was where I was introduced to a lot more um, sort of uh, processes and techniques that I wouldn't, that I wouldn't have found otherwise, that I wouldn't have sort of considered, um, like printmaking, that's where um, my sort of interest in printmaking kind of began. Um, I could, and I think it links back to that kind of style that I always liked uh, of kind of uh, comic books that kind of mass produced uh, a lot of lines, a lot of like bold contrasts and uh, a lot of stylization. That was what I was really into. So yeah, I, um, after college, uh, obviously I went to, came in to Salford um, started university and that's been a fantastic experience that's been really good um, I've kind of de developed uh, printmaking a bit further in terms of an interest um, a lot of my work used to be quite figurative but now I'm focusing a lot more on uh, landscape and uh, things like kind of environment and texture I'm really interested um, in recording kind of where I live and uh, Kind of trying to record places that maybe have a personal significance and especially uh, since like uh, lockdown and things like that i've become really interested in <laughs> the sort of the places that i'm really used to walking around and stuff um, so i'm just going to show uh, a couple of um, examples of print techniques that i like to use this is uh, a dry point plate quite a good technique in that uh, it doesn't take very many resources to do, it's fairly easy to do. Um, when I started doing it, I was doing it with uh, sheets of plastic, so sheets of like perspex or like thin, uh, flexible, but you could use pretty much uh, anything if, it, if you can get uh, sort of scratch into it and they'll, 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 if they'll stay, if it's a fairly like resistant material. Um, so what you do is you use just this called an etching tool um, and you just scratch into the surface and obviously because this is like a scrap piece of aluminium that I had um, and that's one of the good things about it you can just sort of use cheap bits of the stuff that you've got lying around so if you have got bits of metal knocking about you know you could give it a go um, obviously get a safe sharp pointy thing so yeah, well after that, after you scratch uh, the image into the surface, you uh, ink ink it up by rubbing ink all into the grooves all over the surface, and then you got to clean it off where you want it to be lighter. And that's the beauty of it is that you can um, leave you know more ink where you want it to be darker if that, if you want that on the surface as well, or you can just wipe it off as clean as possible and you'll just have the lines. Uh, and then you should come away with something like this. Um, and you can see that obviously it's lighter where I've uh, cleaned it away more, but in the darker areas where there's heavier lines, I've left a bit more ink. Um, so you can get some really nice effects. Obviously, because it's a printmaking technique, things like letters need to be done. You need to flip them, basically and do them backwards, otherwise it will come out the wrong way when you print it, uh, which is something that I often forget to do, so it's worth remembering if you do, give it a go, ever. Um, another printmaking technique 
so dry point is called, uh, part of a group of uh, printmaking techniques called intaglio, which means that the ink goes into the grooves that you're making, into the cuts that you're making. And what I'm going to show you now is lino cut, which is a relief printmaking technique, which means that the ink goes, it's kind of the opposite, the ink goes on the surface instead of the grooves that you cut in. So you use a different kind of tool for this, um, which is kind of a little bit more like a, a very small kind of knife almost. Uh, little thing to like cut basically uh, uh, you know shapes out of um, out of the lino uh, again you have to flip the image if you want it to be accurate um, but this allows you to have more um, sort of control over the shapes that you're making and you can get really nice sort of fluid lines and styles with it and you should come away once you've done it with something like this um, and it's probably my favourite printmaking technique just because you get these bright bold sort of blocky uh, images and uh, this is uh, just a bus just based on a photo of a bus I was riding on the way back from uni one day. Um, another thing you can do uh, I've only just started, uh, just only just been introduced to is called a, a jigsaw line of cut I think and uh, a jigsaw print basically so to get these uh, bits of yellow because I wanted to sort of uh, add the effect of uh, the big like fluorescent lights on top of the bus um, you've got to basically very carefully trace uh, around the shapes that you want uh, coloured in on the original uh, print so I had to trace around these shapes and often you have a lot of um, like scrap bits of lino knocking about so it's a good way to use them and so I ended up cutting these out um, and yeah you just kind of ink them up the same way you would normally place them down and you have to very carefully put your print on top your original lino print and that's how you come away with the yellow so that's just another technique that I enjoy um, trying out. Um, my practice these days is kind of, uh, like I say, uh, very interesting uh, my environment, um, so sort of where I'm living. Um, I'm quite interested in the, how that links to like uh, our memories of places and stuff like that. I'm interested in quite mundane, sort of everyday places that we're constantly visiting, constantly around that maybe we're not uh, and taking in in quite the same way, maybe we're taking it in in a bit more of a sort of subconscious way. I find it really interesting, sort of just everyday places that we were always walking past, um, just because of how strongly I like personally I find memories are linked to things like that. So I'm just that's something I'm in, interested in really uh, exploring in my work, and um, I'm sort of uh, getting into more like uh, sort of slightly abstract kind of. Uh, looking at uh, texture and things like that and um, that kind of is what I will be showing you today um, so the activity that I'm going to be showing you is uh, just a, a little quick thing you can do maybe when you're out for a walk which is what I did or um, you could do it around your house you could do it in your garden if you've got one you could do it in the street you could do it pretty much anywhere that there's going to be surfaces that you can safely get rubbings from so if you don't know um a rubbing is when you take a piece of paper and bl place it on a surface with uh, on a textured surface uh so we could say uh like a manhole cover you put your paper on top of it and then you rub with the flat edge of a crayon or a pencil and then you rub over it and that gives you the impression. So rubbings, which is sometimes called frottage, is um, it's quite an old, it's a very very old um, printmaking technique, and it's uh, a really useful one when it f for if you uh, if you, maybe if you see something, and obviously it won't work with everything, but maybe you see something interesting, maybe you see uh, like a placard or something interesting like that when you're out and about and you don't have a camera or whatever, and you want want to 
uh, keep what it says or whatever, you want to make a note of it, you can just quickly do a rubbing over it and there you go, got your, uh, got your recorded image of it. But um, all you'll need for this activity is just some paper and any kind of paper will do. You can use scrap paper you've got lying around. It just needs to be fairly sturdy so it's going to hold up to get in the, the rubbings, but any sort of paper should do. Uh, lined paper works as well. Um, and a crayon, or uh, if you've got like some art materials like uh, oil pastels or something like that, um, or like I say, the side of a pencil could work. Um, anything that's gonna, you know, rub over the surface and pick up the um, the impression of what's underneath. Uh, the second part of the activity I'm going to show you is sort of what we can do um, when we get our rubbings and bring them back on. Some just some little ideas that we can try out. So, got another one here. Um, it's up to you, really. So, like I was saying before, you can have a go at maybe tearing them up. So, tear this one up a little bit. And we can make some strips. Don't have to be too careful. If you want a specific shape, you know, feel free to cut them out with some scissors or whatever. But, I like to just have a good old, just tear them up and have a, have a muck about really. Because you can start um, making kind of like abstract sort of shapes if you want over what you've already got or layering things. You could glue these down on this one that could be coloured in. You can work with the, the shapes that you've got. Or you can start trying to make new ones. Constructing something out of them. So there's this nice sort of line going through this one. So it's nice to kind of work with that a bit. And then maybe working with the theme of being out and about in the city and recording the surroundings. You could start making buildings, blocks, flats, towers. This could be a subway down here. And you can use whatever you want for this. You could use paint, you can use crayons, pencils, use pens. Just kind of making like a an abstract kind of cityscape. Working with all the shapes that we've got. Do some little windows in there. So I think quite a rough sort of style looks really nice with the uh, with the rubbings, but you could use that uh, use the rubbings as sort of like texture for more detailed pieces. Tear out little bits, tear them out as little squares maybe, and use them as bricks to collage together. A uh, sort of tower so then you've got a really nice sort of texture there putting them together like actual bricks and then once those are glued down you know you can draw your tower onto them or around them so I've just get, I'm just giving you a rough idea of what you could do And here's one I made earlier. So, you know, I've just kind of worked into um, some of the rubbings that I got. Um, and I've used a uh, marker pen to kind of just draw in these trees here. And so a really simple kind of like almost abstract kind of terraced house, houses. 
Um, just what I could see out of the window, really. I mean, apart from the two trees that was uh, that was invented, but that was just because I had the green there. But that's what I mean. You know, it's nice to work with uh, what some of the colours or shapes or patterns are suggesting to you. You know, you don't. It doesn't have to be totally accurate. It's kind of about collaging together uh, all the different elements and bringing it all into your own kind of vision of what what you want to put on the paper. Um, so I've just sort of added in these windows and the roof to kind of suggest these houses but that's just using um, you know the, the red that was already there from the rubbings which kind of just looked like a kind of brickwork of uh, terraced houses so I kind of just thought that was kind of what it uh, said to me so you know it's just an idea of what you could try um, and make at home just dead quick dead easy this took me you know a couple of minutes to make really Apart from all the rubbings that I had to get, <laughs> but you know, it's just a fun thing you can do while you're out and about. If you just remember to take some crayons or whatever, or a pencil with you, get some rubbings, um, bring them on, and uh, have a little go, collage in, find stuff out.